around $169 a month. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. And number on the back is... Yeah, I'm going to have to call you back. Hey, oh, I... We understand people lose things. Here you go, Sarah. Hold on to this one. Thank you. Sarah? So at TD Bank, you can replace a lost debit card instantly. Yep, that's mine. Don't just bank. Bank human. Now, New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News. The world's largest St. Patrick's Day parade marched up Fifth Avenue today. 150,000 happy people in that parade and as many as 2 million more people on the sidelines sharing in that Irish pride. But first, the search for a gunman who fired several shots, critically wounding a livery driver. And good evening at 6 o'clock. I'm Tony Yates in for Sandra Bookman. And I'm Joe Torres. First responders rushed the driver to the hospital after a passenger shot him in the Bronx this morning. Several shots hit 26-year-old Jeffrey Camacho. The shooting happened in Soundview. Now there is a reward for information on the gunman. Eyewitness News reporter Naveen Dhaliwal is live at Jacoby Hospital with our lead story. Naveen. Well, Tony and Joe, he was doing an honest job, making honest money, and somehow Jeffrey Camacho ended up in the hospital here at Jacoby. Friends tell us that he's been through several surgeries this morning, and right now he's in critical condition, all over a few dollars. He was robbed of $23. Only a year on the job, Jeffrey Cisnero Camacho was confident when he picked up someone hailing a cab around 1230 this morning in the Bronx to drop them off on Morrison Avenue a few miles away. He lives near here, so he was probably on his way home. He saw the street hail picked it up, thought he could make probably an extra 10 or $15. The head of the New York State Federation of Taxi Drivers and police say that decision nearly cost Camacho his life as the passenger pulled out a gun and robbed and shot him several times before taking off. And at 1244 exactly, I heard a shot. Four, exactly four. Neighbors woken up to the gunfire as a 26-year-old, though injured, found enough strength to flag down police patrolling nearby. We saw a whole bunch of cops just fly by me, like five or six cops, they went like 50 miles an hour. Chaos as police blocked off the streets and home surveillance videos showing investigators combing for evidence, specifically trying to put together a description of the suspect, a man who should never have been picked up in the first place, as officials say drivers are encouraged to use a dispatch. They're not thinking about their life. They're thinking about their responsibilities and their obligations to their families. And he is a father of three daughters. Right now, friends are setting up a GoFundMe page for that family. And the police looking for this shooter. Reporting live in the Bronx, I'm Naveen Dhaliwal, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Naveen, thank you. We have this new surveillance video in a violent home invasion. Police just released it. It shows two of the five men accused of beating and robbing a man in his 70s. This was in the Bronx. Investigators say the men punched and kicked a man inside his apartment building. This happened in Park Chester on March 7th. They're also accused of hitting the victim with a metal object and taking items from his home. Doctors treated him for injuries to his head and his face. Police want to find those attackers. FDNY Commissioner Daniel Nigro says the department is in mourning today following the deaths of two firefighters in a helicopter crash in Iraq. Fire Marshal Christopher Z Zanetti's and Fire Department Lieutenant Christopher Raguso were among seven service members killed in Thursday's crash. Nigro praised them for wearing two uniforms in their extraordinary lives of service. It's unbelievable that people that sacrifice for a living volunteer to sacrifice for the military. It's, uh, it's incredible. It speaks to the, what kind of people we have in the New York City Fire Department, the bravery of the members. Four of the airmen killed were based in West Hampton Beach, including the two firefighters. The Pentagon says the crash does not appear to be the result of enemy activity, and investigation is now underway. 
Three more bodies were recovered this morning from the scene of that bridge collapse at Florida International University in Miami. At least six people were killed when the bridge fell onto a busy roadway on Thursday. The National Transportation Safety Board says construction workers were tightening cables on the bridge at the time that it collapsed. They were applying tension to strengthen a member. I don't know if that was related to the cracks that they discovered. That's still too early in the investigation for us to determine. The university says it met with bridge engineers and transportation officials hours before the collapse to discuss cracks on that bridge, but they determined there were not safety issues. An improperly disposed lithium battery is being blamed for a huge fire at a recycling plant in Queens that disrupted the LIWRO service. Uh, yesterday, flames shot up in the air at the Royal Waster Services in Hollis. 10 to 15 foot stacks of paper and cardboard were being stored there. Now to Irish pride on display at the world's largest St. Patrick's Day parade right here in New York City. About 150,000 people participating in the parade up Fifth Avenue on this chilly March day. And a couple of million spectators there to cheer them on. Timothy Cardinal Dolan celebrated Mass at St. Patrick's Cathedral before going outside to greet the people there on Fifth Avenue. Eyewitness News reporter A.J. Ross on the Upper East Side. A.J. And Joe, the first St. Patrick's Day parade actually took place on March 17th, 1762. And this amazing tradition has not only continued over the centuries, it's grown. You mentioned millions converged here along Fifth Avenue today, and they were celebrating their Irish heritage along with paying homage, I should say, or honoring the patron saint of Ireland. A sea of shamrocks and smiles dazzled Fifth Avenue Saturday as the 257th New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade kicked off in the heart of Manhattan. It's tradition, you know, it's, it runs in the family. Bring my kids out to the best parade in New York City. With bagpipes, kilts, and flags in tow, more than 150,000 marchers and volunteers walked from St. Patrick's Cathedral on 44th all the way up to the American Irish Historical Society at East 80th, with families from all across the tri-state cheering them on. It's fun. Uh, everybody's so friendly and gets along on this day. Everybody's Irish today. The music, the counties, the counties are absolutely my favorite part. The fire department, the police department. Honoring St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland and of the Archdiocese of New York. For many, today was about making memories they can continue to pass down for generations. It's my heritage, my family, you know. It's I want to show them, carry it on. You know, St. Patty's Day in New York City is just a great day to come out as a family and be Irish. Now, this parade is organized entirely by volunteers and is actually taking months, or I should say it takes months, to plan and execute. Live on the Upper East Side, I'm A.J. Ross, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. A.J., thank you, and we invite you to share your pictures of St. Patrick's Day celebrations using the hashtag ABC7NY. So now we head to St. Patrick's Day in Chicago, world's largest importer of green dye, maybe, or maybe not. Uh, the Chicago River was made green for the 55th straight year. That tradition began when a member of a local plumbers union suggested using dye uh, that's used to detect leaks in large buildings to change the color of the river. Now, the exact formula of the dye is still a secret, uh, and it's going to stay green, the river is, for just about three days. And Britain's Prince William and his wife Kate attended a St. Patrick's Day celebration at a military barracks in West London. Kate handed out shamrocks to soldiers of the Irish Guards. The Duchess of Cambridge is due to give birth to the couple's third child next month. Fired just two days before retirement. As we continue with Eyewitness News at 6 on this Saturday evening, the Attorney General fires the former Deputy Director of the FBI, putting his pension in jeopardy what the president is saying about it. And a couple of new murals are getting a lot of attention. The artist is no stranger to Manhattan, but he's a stranger to most of us. More on that. And it was a pretty chilly St. Patrick's Day out there. Temperatures right now around 47. The average high this time of year is around 50 degrees. Some clouds from the city and points south. Those would be kind of melting away into the open waters of the Atlantic overnight, giving way to clear skies. Lows tonight get down into the upper 20s. It's going to be a very chilly start for the New York City Half Marathon tomorrow morning, so be sure to bundle up for that, getting up into the 40s during the afternoon. We're all looking ahead to the potential for some accumulating snow in a portion of the area on the first day of spring. We'll detail that in your full AccuWeather forecast coming up. I'm Bill Ritter, U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal on gun control possibilities.
and Con Ed CEO on lessons learned from power problems from the last storm. Up close, Sunday morning at 11. Closed captioning is experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. How do you show up? Do you just bring it? Or do you bring it all? Focus. You gotta go. Third row, like a pro. Current eligible lessees can get this low mileage lease on this 2018 GMC Acadia SLE1 for around $259 per month for 36 months. Visit tristategmc.com. Don't put me on a pedestal. I'm a clinical trial patient, and some days are hard. But weakness isn't an option, and I have support. My doctors and nurses, my family, my friends. I have cancer, but it can't have me. RWJ Barnabas Health and the Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey, partners in the fight against cancer, bringing world-class care close to home for you and those you love. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's beat cancer together. She thought she donated her car to charity, but now... Whoever has the car now is racking up tickets. More than half a year later, she's on the hook for thousands in parking violations for a car she no longer owns. Before you sell your car, settle on your side with the steps you need to take Monday at 5. Welcome back, and President Trump is calling the firing of former Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe a great day for America. Attorney General Jeff Sessions fired McCabe just two days before McCabe was set to retire. Now some of the president's critics are blasting that move. ABC's Chuck Severson reports. President Trump under extraordinary attack from former CIA Director John Brennan, who tweeted, when the full extent of your venality, moral turpitude, and political corruption becomes known, you will take your rightful place as a disgraced demagogue in the dustbin of history. You may scapegoat Andy McCabe, but you will not destroy America. America will triumph over you. The denunciation of the president coming just hours after Attorney General Jeff Sessions fired Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe for allegedly speaking to a reporter about the Clinton email investigation and reportedly misleading investigators when asked about it. He got fired because he released information that hurt Hillary Clinton. That's really at the foundation of the firing. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but vindictiveness seems to be at the core. In a tweet, Trump calling McCabe's ouster a great day for the hardworking men and women of the FBI, a great day for democracy. Sanctimonious James Comey was his boss and made McCabe look like a choir boy. McCabe not going quietly, saying in a statement, I am being singled out and treated this way because of the role I played, the actions I took, and the events I witnessed in the aftermath of the firing of James Comey. Former FBI Director James Comey responding to the McCabe firing too, tweeting, Mr. President, the American people will hear my story very soon, and they can judge for themselves who is honorable and who is not. Comey kicking off his book tour next month. And a source now telling ABC News that McCabe, just like Comey, took personal notes of his interactions with Trump and handed them over to the special counsel. Mueller is investigating possible collusion between Trump's presidential campaign and Russia, which the president has consistently and vehemently denied. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. A police search tonight for a man wanted in a road rage murder in New Jersey. Investigators say the driver of this white pickup truck sliced the face of another man and took off. It happened in Deptford in Gloucester County on March 7th. The victim, Joseph Peary, ran to a nearby home for help until paramedics arrived. Only thing the young man was screaming, which touched me, was, I don't want to die. I have a four-year-old son. I don't want to die. Police described the truck as a white and tan Ford pickup with a crew cab and mounted toolbox. It's unclear what led to the attack. So are you bored looking for something to do this weekend? Like you don't know our taxes are due? <laughs> uh, the deadline this year to file your federal and state taxes is actually April 17th, exactly a month from today. Now the usual date as we know is April 15th, but it falls on a Sunday and then the 16th is Emancipation Day, which is an official holiday in the District of Columbia. So this year we have two extra days to get the job done. Call your accountant, <laughs> get the work done. <laughs> New street art just ahead on Eyewitness News, we check out Banksy's newest murals next. And meteorologist Jeff Smith has your AccuWeather forecast for tomorrow and concerns about a storm next week. First, here's a look at what's coming up on World News Tonight. 
Joe and Tony, good evening. Coming up, the president's top attorney calling for the Russia investigation to now be shut down. Plus, the cracks in that devastating bridge collapse seen days before the tragedy. And the scam targeting families on spring break involving kidnapping. It's all coming up after Eyewitness News. Stay with ABC7 starting at 7 with Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. Then at 8, a special edition of 2020 with Roseanne The Return. Deception at 9 and For the People at 10. Followed by New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News at 11. Only on ABC7. They say we inherit the sins of our fathers. We wouldn't have it any other way. We're the Brotherhood of Muscle. Well-qualified lessees of competitive vehicles get a low-mileage lease on the 2018 Durango for $279 a month. I want to go somewhere away from it all, but close to the heart. I want the me time and the me time. I want to follow the breeze and throw caution to the wind. I want a back rub, a soak tub, a nightclub. I want to savor it all, feel the spectacular. Because this, right here and now, is exactly how I want to remember us. How do you show up? Let's go. Do you just bring it? Or do you bring it all? Third row, like a pro. Current eligible SEs can get this low mileage lease on this 2018 GMC Acadia SLE 1 for around $259 per month for 36 months. We are professional grade GMC. Eyewitness News needs your help to protect our children. Have you seen Michael? ABC7 and Ridgewood Savings Bank thank you for helping protect our children. Well, one of the world's most famous graffiti artists is back in New York City. Banksy created two new pieces this week. The mysterious street artist painted this 70-foot mural on the corner of Houston Street and the Bowery. There is some meaning behind it. It's a protest supporting Turkish artist Zara Dogan. She's in prison. And if you go farther uptown, you can see where Banksy put up another new piece. That's at 14th Street and 6th Avenue. That one shows a rat running inside a clock. Time's running out for winter. That's what it means. <laughs> Let's yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully those, uh, those paintings won't be spoiled by some snowfall on Tuesday. Right mm -hmm. now, for the city and points north, it's more likely actually that we stay dry on Tuesday. South of the city, it's a different story. That's your best shot at getting some accumulating snow. It's going to be a very fine line between getting nothing and potentially getting several inches of snow during the day on Tuesday. Here's a look right now off to the south past the Empire State Building. Uh, that temperature 47. The high on the day so far is your current temperature of 47 after getting down to 27 earlier this morning. A west wind coming in 10 gusting up to 17. The normal high this time of year, around 50. So we were below that today. It felt a lot colder with the wind as well. 75, your record on this date back in 1945, and the sun going down about 7.05. So quiet but chilly right through the day tomorrow and also on Monday. It's a close call, a very close call with snow Tuesday into Wednesday, potentially. The best shot at accumulating snow would be south of New York City in this particular setup, kind of bucking the trend of the last few systems where it was either north and west of the city or well east out onto eastern parts of Long Island. 49 Newark right now, 48 Teterboro, 44 at White Plains, or 37 at Monticello, 46 down the shore at Belmar, 46 on the island at Iceland. Here's our satellite radar showing one little batch of clouds basically uh, south of New York City, and this continues to kind of erode away off to the south and east. A little system down here created some sprinkles over parts of the Delmarva and down toward Cape May, New Jersey. That's moving out into the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Here's our future cast overnight tonight. We're down into the upper 20s by early tomorrow morning. So be sure to bundle up if you're heading out to the New York City half marathon tomorrow morning. It is going to be chilly out there, sub-freezing at the start line. During the afternoon, we get back up into the 40s. Again, quiet right through the day on Monday. It's a pretty chilly air mass in place, struggling to get out of the lower 40s on Monday. And watch what happens as we head into Monday night and especially during the day on Tuesday. Look at how close of a call this is for getting some snowfall even up into New York City. This particular model here, our future cast, 
showing some accumulating snow, maybe getting up into central and southern parts of New Jersey, but it would just take a hiccup of 50 miles to the north of this system to get some snowfall into New York City. So this is definitely one to watch. So this storm system heads off to our south and east during the day on Tuesday. Another one back here we'll have to watch for Wednesday. This has a little bit better of an indication of going well off to our south and east, but we'll have to watch it just in case because that could become a stronger storm, but well offshore. AccuWeather forecast for tonight, clear and cold. We're down to about 28 for a low. We'll call it seasonable for mid-March, seasonably chilly out there with abundant sunshine tomorrow. So after a very chilly start, we do eventually get up into the middle 40s and even upper 40s in some cases. Mostly clear, cold tomorrow night. We're down to about 31. Here's your AccuWeather 7-day forecast. On Monday, sun giving way to some clouds in the afternoon, the high getting up to 44. Right now, we'll call it uh, a chance of getting a little bit of snow in New York City, just snow in the air. I think south of the city, there's a better shot at getting some accumulating snow. The high getting up to 40, but the places that get the accumulating snow, the high probably only gets up into the lower 30s. And there could be some flakes to start on Wednesday as well with that secondary system. We'll be watching that. Chances are that stays offshore, about 40, maybe some sunshine late in the day. And then heading into late week, staying in the 40s. Again, the average high is in the low 50s this time of year. So really no spring in sight, even as spring officially mm -hmm. begins just after midday mm -hmm. on Thursday. That WABC storm jacket, I'm ready to retire it for the season. <laughs> <laughs> Just get rid of it. Are we all? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Anthony Johnson up next with Lucas Parks. That's right. Gang Green is feeling a wee bit lucky on the St. Patrick's Day after making a draft move that could be a winner. The Jets have made a swap that guarantees them a shot at one of the top quarterbacks coming out of college this year. Plus, a Yankee pitcher who is feeling a little blue after not starting on opening day gets bombed down in spring training. Eyewitness News Sports is next, but first... Channel 7 is your home for the 2018 New York City Half Marathon. And we're taking you mile by mile for some of the sights along the course. Mile 5 of the New York City Half Marathon brings you to the wide expanse of the FDR Drive for the first time. We're members of the New York Flyers Running Club. On race day, we'll have runners racing, volunteering, and cheering you on along the course. Go Runners! All right, go runners. The New York City Half Marathon tomorrow. Our coverage kicks off at 7 a.m. I'll be there. More and more people are finding themselves in a Chevrolet for the first time. Trying something new can be exciting, empowering, downright exhilarating. See for yourself why Chevrolet is the most awarded and fastest growing brand the last four years overall. Switch into a new Chevy now. Current qualified competitive owners and lessees can get this 2018 Chevy Equinox for around $169 a month. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. My husband's probably going to think I'm crazy. He thinks I'm going to see my sister. Sometimes the confidence to be spontaneous starts with financial stability. Once I heard it, I was shocked. I just thought, I have to go get it. <laughs> See how a personalized financial strategy and access to J.P. Morgan investment expertise can help you, Chase, make more of what's yours. It's employee pricing at P.C. Richard & Son. There's never been a better time to save because you pay where our employees pay, not a penny more. It's employee pricing now on select appliances, electronics, and mattresses only at P.C. Richard & Son. Right now at National Floors Direct, we'll give you three full rooms of carpeting, next day installation, padding, everything, all for just $888. And no interest for one year. Call National Floors Direct at 888-400-FLOOR. Change is good. This Eyewitness News Sports Report is sponsored by Hyundai. Get a great deal more than a great deal at the Hyundai Season of More event. Going on now. Offer ends March 31st. <laughs> great deal more than a great deal at the Hyundai Season of More event. Lease an all-wheel drive Santa Fe Sport for $209 a month or get up to $37.50 in total savings. Hurry in. Offers end April 2nd. The Jets moving on up. 
<laughs> yeah, they are, aren't they? <laughs> we'll see. There are a lot of NFL teams green with envy after the Jets jumped in the draft. The Jets haven't had a true franchise quarterback in years. I think Joe Namath. So with a draft chock full of QBs that look like the real deal, Gangrene decided to make a real move. Now, here is the deal. The Jets received the Indianapolis Colts pick third overall. They give up the sixth overall pick as well as the two picks they had in the second round, as well as their second round pick next season. So it's clear the Jets have their eyes on one of the quarterbacks, though we really don't know who. And if you're a Jets fan who's concerned they gave up too many picks, consider this. The Jets haven't drafted a pro bowler in the second round since Mark Gastineau back in 1979. So what does that all mean for the Giants? New general manager Dave Gettleman has the second pick in the draft, right before the Jets. But with Eli Manning expected to be under center next season, Big Blue could demand a king's ransom if they trade back. It's all going to depend on Gettleman and the new head coach, Pat Shermer. One more football note. Former Giants offensive lineman Justin Pugh signed a five-year deal with the Arizona Cardinals last night. Pugh was the Giants' first-round pick back in 2013. Well, the world of college basketball fell on its face last night. Yes, that's right. When the greatest upset in the history of the tournament took place, forcing everyone to toss out their bracket selections. <laughs> yeah, the UMBC Retrievers became the first 16 seed to take down a one seed in 136 tries. Not only that, Virginia was the unanimous number one team in the country. UMBC needed to win their conference just to make it to the tournament. But now they're playing the role of Cinderella. Unbelievable. So proud of these kids. You know, I take so much joy in, in watching them smile. You know, I think it's pretty easy to tell everybody in the arena that these guys have passion. Uh, these guys love to play this game. All right, on the women's side, just when you thought you seen it all from the UConn Lady Huskies, they have a performance like today in the opening round against St. Francis. Try to keep track. UConn led 55-19 after the first quarter. Now, that's the most points scored in women's college hoops history in the first quarter. St. Francis had 52 points the whole game. But UConn was not done. They scored 94 points in the first half. Another record. They let up in the second half, right? No. Wrong. The Lady Huskies scored the most points ever in women's hoops history they win. Check this out, 140 to 52. Yeah. <laughs> the Yankees have named Luis Severino their starter for opening day. He beat out Masahiro Tanaka for that honor. And Tanaka agrees. He says Severino getting the nod is well-deserved. Tanaka took to the mound right after the announcement, and he certainly didn't look like an ace. He pitched two and two-thirds innings, gave up four hits, four earned runs. His ERA this spring is over 11, 9-3, pinstripes fall to the Tigers. And the spring of misery for the Mets took a break on this St. Patrick's Day. We hope to see more of this during the regular season. Wilmer Flores crushed a home run, and the Amazons beat the Nationals' final score 9-7. Third round, Arnold Palmer Invitational. Tiger Woods finished the day three under par. He's seven under for the tournament, but he's still six strokes off the league. And on the ice, Devils hanging on for their playoff lives. They're looking for two big points against the Kings this afternoon. Former Ranger Michael Grabner scored a shorthanded goal. Three-nothing Jersey leads in the third. And don't forget, tonight, big game, Seton Hall taking on Kansas. We'll have all the highlights coming up. At right, now it's all about the Retrievers. It's all yes. about the Golden Retrievers. The retrievers are golden. That's right. That's Thanks, Anthony. Stuff. Thank you. That is the news for now. Thanks for joining us. World News Tonight is next. I'm Joe Torres. And I'm Tony. We are coming back here at 11 o'clock. We hope you join us back here at 11 o'clock as well. Make it a good evening, everyone. In 2014, the United Airlines NYC half added a professional wheelchair division and established itself as a major race for world-class wheelchair athletes. To commemorate the fifth anniversary of this milestone, five past champions will race for the podium this year. Watch the United Airlines NYC half, Sunday at 7 a.m. only on ABC7. I'm Sandra Bookman coming up on Here and Now, harnessing the power of the black vote and South Africa marking the 100th anniversary of Nelson Mandela's birth, Sunday at noon. More and more people are finding themselves in a Chevrolet for the first time. Trying something new can be exciting, empowering, downright exhilarating. See for yourself why Chevrolet is the most awarded and fastest growing brand the last four years overall. Current qualified select competitive owners and lessees can get this Chevy Cruze for around $169 a month.
or $4,500 total cash allowance on most cruise models when you purchase. Waiting for the right time to buy a heart? 